Hi, I'm Alec Johnson. I'm an orthopedic surgeon specializing in sports medicine and hip preservation. And I'm here with... My name is Brian Lee, and I'm a physician assistant specializing as well in sports medicine, working with Dr. Alice Johnson. And we're here to talk to you today about femoral acetabular impingement. Now, this is a condition where there is abnormal bone growth, either on the femur side uh, for femoral or acetabular side, which is the socket side of the hip joint. Uh, and that abnormal hip growth causes uh, impingement between those bones as the bones move, and that ultimately causes pain. A lot of it has to do with uh, range of motion. So impingement, just by the definition of impingement, means uh, where two things encroach upon each other and they begin to lose range of motion or kind of begin to uh, pinch upon each other. And this is where we're talking about specifically at the hip or around the crease of your hip. So if you're thinking about when you sit down, when the crease of your hip, people tend to start to feel pain in that area. Other symptomology that will also come about is uh, where the area of the pain is going to be at. So I've already mentioned that sometimes that pain is going to be in the groin area along the hip crease. Sometimes that pain can kind of radiate off to the side as well. And it's those two areas that kind of become problematic. And we start to see this kind of early on. Uh, most of our patients, we start to see this, uh, you know, younger populations between the ages of 14, but this can also propagate all the way to the ages of our early 40s as well. So a question that comes up often is, when do I see a specialist? And when you should start seeing a specialist is when the pain becomes consistent. If it progresses to a point where just walking or normal activities of daily living are starting to be affected by pain in your hip, that's when you should be coming to see us. Yeah, I agree with that. And I, you know, I think that's a lot of times that's what we're seeing is patients that they'll say, you know, I, I just, it just wasn't getting better. And it's been maybe a few weeks for some or maybe it's months for other. And, uh, and it just continues to be a problem. So. Um, and that's when we start talking about uh, treatment options. Now, of course, we'll go through all the diagnosis, uh, lots of physical exam uh, findings to try and uh, pin down exactly what's going on. But if we get a diagnosis of femoral acetabular impingement, uh, there are many treatment options that we have available to us. From the non-operative side, it really all starts with physical therapy because sometimes it can just be uh, that the muscles around the hip joints uh, have gotten tight, uh, that maybe there's just some mild impingement uh, and that's just gotten the hip joint a little bit flared up and that can affect those muscles. And uh, so you just need some work to stretch those things out, uh, to build up the strength around the, uh, the hip joint to help stabilize the joint and take some pressure off of the joint itself. Usually, uh, when there's an issue, when it's been going on for a long time though, uh, physical therapy, it, it may not be enough to uh, treat the condition. Uh, then we talk about other uh, non-operative things. Uh, Brian mentioned it earlier, um, things like uh, anti-inflammatories, uh, and those can be great to help kind of cut down uh, the inflammation inside the hip. Uh, and then other pain medications like, like Tylenol and things like that. And sometimes again, it just, it just requires just some rest, a little bit of anti-inflammatory, and, and it can calm down. Um, but many times it requires some more than that. And that's when we talk about injections. And injections can be a little bit tricky. Um, and it's very nuanced when to use an injection for femoral acetabular impingement and when not to. When to do that type of injection, a lot of times, if I'm not sure the diagnosis, and so, you know, think that maybe this is a hip impingement, I think it's coming from the hip joint, but I'm not entirely sure, that can be a great time to do an injection. Uh, we have one of our colleagues that will do the injection either under ultrasound or x-ray uh, and then put the medicine into the hip joint. If that injection takes away your pain and makes you feel better uh, and helps your symptoms, uh, then that can be a good sign that this is femoral tabular impingement or some other condition that is contained within the hip joint itself. Alternatively, if it doesn't get better, uh, then maybe there's something else going on and maybe we need to look at the spine or the back or, or something like that. So yeah, if things are not getting better with the non-operative treatments, whether that be the physical therapy or the injections or the things that we talked about, uh, then that's when we talk about surgery. 
And surgical intervention would be in the form, most, in most cases, a hip arthroscopy procedure. And all that means is, is that we would make some small poke holes around the hip joint and we'd put a camera inside the hip joint to repair the structures inside the joint. Um, and in most cases, that can help um, alleviate pain and get patients back to, to the things that they like to do. Um, now, femoroacetabular impingement surgery or hip arthroscopy surgery, I tell patients all the time that the main reason that we're doing the surgery is pain. And we're trying to get rid of their pain and to get them back to doing the activities that they love. So if they've tried all the op operative things and they're still in pain and it's not getting better, then that's a reason to operate. And we've got good evidence uh, to show in the literature that by doing this procedure, we can make their pain better and get them back to sports and activities and things like that. Thank you.